Hello, I'm Kate. I'm a veterinary nurse and PHS direct advisor. It can often be difficult to tell if your pet is showing symptoms of illness. What I'd like to do now is to show you how to do some of these simple checks at home. Um, before we do any examinations on the cat, I'd like to introduce you to Verity. Um, there are different ways that you can actually handle cats. Sometimes they, because they have teeth and claws, they, they may get a little bit fractious there. So I'm going to show you different ways to handle her. And I'd like to introduce you to Dennis, who's going to be helping. Dennis works quite well with Verity. Um, there are different ways that you can hold your cat safely. The first method is the scruff method. So what you'd need to do is if you can see Verity's ears here and this bit of skin here between the top of her head, and her shoulders you want to grab as much of that as possible and actually lift up that's the scruff method and we use that for restraint it's important to make sure that before we actually wrap Verity in a towel that we get all the equipment that we need to begin with so I've got a towel here so if we unfold this again Dennis is going to be helping me with uh, with Verity so if we wrap, put the towel out and then put Verity in the, into the center <laughs> As you can see, sometimes they tend to wriggle a little bit. Now, what we want to do is we want to bring the sides of the, um, of the towel up, making sure that all of the feet are actually tucked in while we still hold the scruff there. We've got all of her claws in there so she can't get to us. Now, normally, if you're using just the scruff method alone, because you've not wrapped any of the feet up, they, you know, she can still get you with her claws. So this method's slightly better. OK, as you can see, she's nicely wrapped up. We're going to look at her head now and in, inside of her mouth. So what we need to do is we need to take our finger and our thumb and put them either side behind the canine teeth using our index finger on our opposite hand and that allows us to open the mouth, okay? Be very careful though because the cats can bite and they also have claws as well, which is why it's important to make sure that you have good restraint on these front, front feet here. As you can see, Dennis is holding her steady to stop her from scratching or biting me. And um, if you do notice that you're getting bitten, then you need to go to see your doctor and get some antibiotics. Often the wounds can become infected and would need treatment. This is Phoebe. We're actually going to do some health checks with Phoebe right now. We're going to start off with her gums. Okay, so all we need to do is if we take the lip and we just raise the lip, as you can see, her gums are nice and pink there. Take your finger or your thumb and just gently press until it turns white and then release. It turned, it turned white and went back to pink. Now what you're looking for there, that's called the capillary refill time. It should be no more than two seconds. If it's two seconds in length then, or more, you really need to get some veterinary attention there because that can indicate a sluggish circulation. Okay, if we gently open her mouth, as you can see, her tongue's nice and pink. That's also allowing you to do yet another assessment on her circulation. If her tongue was blue or grey in any colour, as with her gums, which can be a little bit more difficult to tell, uh, you'd need to take her to see a vet and she would need assessment for her circulation. If we look in her eyes, we're checking to make sure that her pupils are of equal size on both sides and that there isn't any eye discharge there. If we're noticing that either of her pupils, one's larger and one's smaller, it can indicate a head injury. Okay. If we take her eyelid and we just gently pull it down, we'd also be able to see the pinkness of her eyelids as well. That also helps you to look at her circulation. Okay, working our way down the cat, we're looking to see how she's breathing. You should get normal movement from the chest on both sides. As you can see, it's moving in and out nice and gently there. Now we're also looking a bit further along if you can see this area here on her abdomen, if she's using that part to breathe at all, or she's mouth breathing, so she's opening her mouth to breathe, that can also indicate that she has difficulty in breathing and would need veterinary assessment. Have a feel of her tummy area. Okay, You need to feel to see if there's any fluid build up there or if it's really, really hard. If it's hard again or even fluidy, you need to get her checked out by the vet. And last but not least, we're going to lift her tail. So I'm just going to come the other side of Dennis now. There we go. We gently lift her tail. Now, what we can tell from here is what sort of poo she's actually having. You, you're looking for any discharge of any sort, any nasty niffs, say any fishy smells or anything that would not normally be okay for a cat. Now, there shouldn't technically be any smell there at all. So I'm just going to have a quick niff which there isn't any smell. You're also looking to see that the anal glands aren't protruding in any way. And as you can see, that was all normal. So there we go. We're going to have a look at Phoebe now. We're going to look at her reflexes. 
Okay, there's two reflexes that we can do. The first one is called the palpebral reflex and that's around the eye. So we're just gently, either using a thumb or a finger, just gently pushing around the eye. And as you can see, she's actually blinking there. That's quite normal. Okay. The other reflex that we're going to use as well is called the pedal reflex. And she may not like this one terribly. You take the toes, okay, and in between the toes you'll find that there's some web skin. All you do is just gently pinch that. And as you can see, she's actually trying to pull her foot back. There we go. While we're still at the front end looking at Phoebe, um, and we're just, we've just done the um, pedal reflex, we can also check her nails as well. Now, the sort of things that we may be looking for there are scuffing of the nails, which could indicate that she may have been in a car collision. Um, to, to get the claws to come out, all you need to do is just go along to the end of the paw and just gently push, and that will retract the claw so you can actually see. So we just check all of them there. Now, with cats, they tend to fight, okay? They also can get lumps and bumps which can be caused by their skin or their type of skin. So what we're going to do now is we're going to just have a feel of Phoebe and make sure that she hasn't got any lumps or bumps that shouldn't be there. Sometimes these abscesses can be caused by other cats biting or scratching them. As you're running your fingers through, you can be feeling for scabs or lesions, they're otherwise known as. In which case, it, Phoebe doesn't actually have any, which is really, really good. She's a good girl. When we're looking for lumps and bumps, abscesses can actually show up either in the fur as a bit of discharge, so you might notice a bit of sticky mess there, or the abscess itself will actually be like a, a rather large warm lump. Okay, if it feels really hard, then it can, it can be an abscess. However, it's worth getting it checked out. I hope these few simple tests will really help you and your pet. It's worth remembering them because you never know when you may need them. We at PHS are here to help you. If you are worried about your pet, give us a call.